When a piston moves down, the pressure in the cylinder drops below atmosphere. The pressure of the air outside the cylinder forces air into the cylinder. So as the piston goes down, right, it creates low pressure in the cylinder. The low pressure in the cylinder, combined with the valve being opened, allows the air to go into the engine, right? So unless you have a turbocharged or supercharged car, it's the, it's the atmospheric pressure that pushes the air in the engine. A turbocharger is driven by the exhaust. So the exhaust goes into this port here and turns this wheel right here. Now, oil feeds into here to lubricate the turbocharger. When the turbocharger is spinning, it compresses air over here in the compressor side and pushes the air into the engine. Now this particular turbocharger has, you can see, has oil inside the housing here. That means the seal inside this turbocharger is leaking oil and that can cause smoke when the engine is running. In order to fuel to ignite, it needs to be mixed in the proper ratio with air and it needs to be in vapor form. Okay, so that's part of the job of the fuel injection and the carburetors is to vaporize the fuel right that way it well, atomizes it which allows it to be vaporized this component here is called a carburetor this particular carburetor is a four barrel carburetor with vacuum secondaries so what happens is when the throttle is opened like this it opens up the primary throttle plates now vacuum will open up the secondary throttle plates so you got your primaries and then your vacuum secondary set open up. Feedback carburetors were used on some older cars. They were carburetors with electronics to help control air fuel mixture. As emission standards became more and more strict, carburetors became more and more complex. So what they did is they actually put O2 sensors on cars and they had carburetors with like basically a fuel injector built into the carburetor that would try to maintain the proper air fuel mixture. As these carburetors became more and more complex, they became more and more difficult to work on. I don't know anyone ever back in the day who ever wanted to deal with these, these feedback carburetors. They were like a total disaster. They had all kinds of problems. They just, they desperately clung on to carburetors for a period of time, trying not to go fuel injection, and it really didn't work out. So eventually all the manufacturers just want fuel injection. It's kind of like, like gasoline cars nowadays, right? They, they continue to try to make a lot of them um, and they're gonna try to continue to keep them around as long as they can before they finally give in to EVs, you know, to, for environmental reasons and stuff. But they will try and try and try not to go EV as long as they can. No, not everybody wants them, but just like fuel injection in the, be in the beginning, a lot of people just wanted their carburetor, right? And what people would do is they would, they would get a feedback carburetor and then they would, when it broke, they would get rid of the feedback carburetor and put a regular carburetor on that. But the problem is, is when you went to emissions, you have trouble passing emissions with a regular carburetor. Uh, the float circuit works the same way that a toilet does. When the level rise to a predetermined level, the float closes a needle valve against the seat, stopping further fuel flow from the pump. As the engine uses fuel, the float level drops again, opening the needle valve, allowing fuel to flow again from the fuel pump. The float level is important. If it is too high, the air fuel mixture will be too rich. If it is too low, the mixture will be too lean. The choke is a butterfly valve, like the throttle valve located in the top of the carburetor. When it is closed, the incoming air is restricted, causing a rich air fuel mixture to help the engine run better cold. Uh, chokes, it's only on motorcycles now. Yeah, that's what the choke does. Yeah. The choke cuts the air going into the engine, which makes the air fuel mixture uh, richer, which allows it to start easier cold. But once the engine warms up, you have to turn the choke off, yeah. right? Because otherwise the air fuel mixture would be too rich and the car would bog out. So uh, uh, modern cars, the choke is, uh, is basically controlled by the fuel injection. 
But what it does is it just sprays more fuel when it's cold and less fuel when it's hot. Yeah, chokes are only on like bikes and what, like weed eaters? Well, nowadays, yeah, weed eaters, lawnmowers, bikes, right? All that type of stuff. Airflow is changed by opening and closing the throttle plate on gasoline engines. So to control the amount of air going in the engine, you have a thing called the throttle plate. And the throttle plate, when it opens up, allows air in the engine. On a carbureted car, when the throttle plate opens up, it creates a little bit of a vacuum in the venturi of the engine, which sucks the fuel into the engine. Um, when you first open it, there's a mechanical pump, though, that sprays some fuel in there, uh, part of the carburetor, just to get it ready. It's like the pre-shot, so it doesn't bog out when you hit the throttle. Fuel injected, the fuel injection just sprays the fuel. Carburetors have several circuits. A float circuit, which controls the fuel level in the carburetor. A jet circuit. So there's a thing on a carburetor called a, a jet, and, a, and the jets have needles and seats, right? The seat is the jet, so it's like a tube. And then there's a needle that's basically like this pen. And what happens is there's a hole in there, and when, the, when you open up the throttle and vacuum, if it's vacuum secondary, it's done by vacuum, or if it's mechanical, it mechanically does it. But what happens is vacuum secondary, the more vacuum the Venturi gets, the more it pulls it out, and it's shaped like the pen. So when it's down farther, right, it blocks the flow more. As it goes up, it opens up more. That's what allows the fuel to get sucked in through the Venturi. So as the needle pulls out farther, more fuel. As it closes down more, less fuel. That's, there's two different circuits. There's an idle circuit, and there's the needle and seat jet circuit. Well, and there's a third one called the, uh, the uh, accelerator pump. And that, when you first hit the accelerator, it pumps fuel in there. When you're idling, there's a thing called an idle adjuster screw. And that controls the air-fuel mixture at idle. But when you hit the throttle, these other circuits kick in. So the carburetor will have at least three normal circuits. Uh, idle port, that's where the air goes in at idle and the, and the fuel at idle. So you adjust the idle screw, which controls the throttle plate, and then you got the idle port, which is the fuel for idle. The accelerator pump, which is like a pump that when you first hit the throttle, if you look inside a carburetor, you'll see it shoot fuel in there. Power valve, so that's Holly's, and Holly's have like a little pump that pumps extra fuel in there. And a choke, which restricts the air going into the carburetor to make it run richer on startup. What I have here is I have a throttle body for a 2007 to 2011 Chevy Silverado. Now, the way that the throttle body works is when the driver presses the accelerator pedal, right, on the floor, presses the pedal, or activates the cruise control, the computer sends power to the throttle body. The motor in the throttle body opens the throttle in a percentage and closes the throttle. When the throttle is opened, the automatic default position of the throttle is closed. So you press the accelerator, the computer recognizes it, the computer sends a signal to the throttle body, right, opening the throttle body. If you were to unplug the electrical connector or there were a problem with the computer, the throttle body should automatically close. That's the default position under normal operation. Now, inside the throttle body is a throttle position sensor. Now, in the end of the throttle body, on these Chevy Silverados, this is the throttle position sensor. And the throttle position sensor is what the computer reads to know the position of the throttle body. So we're just going to pull these clips here. It's not very hard. And one more. Okay, so we have the clips on. Now inside the cover,
Okay, so inside the cover, there are gears. All right, and when the motor here, the tack motor, turns, right, it opens the throttle body, okay? So the tack motor turns, opens the throttle body. Tack motor releases, the throttle body naturally closes. The default position, though, is not fully closed. It's, the fully closed is here. The default position is right there. So what happens is when your car is sitting there, and you go to start it up, the throttle is actually at this position. Once the engine starts, the throttle closes a little, okay? But it's in this partly open state before the engine starts. And then once the engine starts, it fluctuates like this to control the idle speed. And when the, you press the accelerator, the cruise control activates or another computer command happens, the computer opens it like this and then it naturally closes like that. That's the default. It's not supposed to stay open or get stuck open or anything like that. Inside of here, the throttle position sensor, now I removed this cover. The throttle position sensor has these brushes. And the way this works is the brushes move across the potentiometer in there. There's two potentiometers, but they share reference voltage. Okay, and the, as this moves across, right, wide open throttle, closed throttle, the computer uses this to determine if the throttle is open or closed. It runs across these brushes here. Newer cars are equipped with fuel injection. Fuel injection provides an accurate fuel management system. The benefit of fuel injection is it can control the air fuel mixture better. Carburetors are only really good for like full power and idling. They really, they, they don't do well at proper air fuel mixture. They just, they're, they are good because they tend to be reliable and they don't have a whole lot of things to break down. But carburetors are very, the worst thing for carburetors is not driving every day. Because the less you drive a carbureted car, the more gunk builds up in the carburetor. And that's what messes the carburetors up, is if you park a car for like a week and all the gas evaporates in the carburetor, right? It, all that gunk stays in there. Every time that the gas evaporates in the carburetor, you get more gunk in it. So the best thing for a carbureted car is that it runs a lot. New cars are port fuel injected. The first fuel injection system was called the pressure carburetor or TVI, throttle body fuel injection. Now, fuel injection was first invented for airplanes. Because remember how the carburetor has a float in it and it doesn't do good when it's tilted and stuff? Yeah, good luck with an airplane, right? With a carburetor. Okay, because you know, you start climbing in an airplane, then all of a sudden it runs out of fuel, <laughs> right? Or you start going down to land, <laughs> it runs out of fuel, right? That's bad. Okay, so all of a sudden you start trying to land the airplane, or you turn, right, it runs out of fuel, you lose power and you crash into a mountain. So carburetors and airplanes don't really work out. So they use fuel injection with, with airplanes. This is a throttle body fuel injection. The throttle body fuel injection has, this one has two injectors on top of the throttle body. The fuel pressure regulator is mounted right here. Now, when the throttle is opened, air, is drawn in through the throttle plates. This one is a two barrel because it has two plates. When that happens, the fuel injectors spray the fuel. Now, the fuel pressure is controlled by the fuel pressure regulator mounted right here, and the throttle position sensed by the throttle position sensor right here. So when the throttle opens, the computer reads the voltage change at the throttle position sensor. Now, the TBI cannot control the idle air. So what happens is with the TBI is there's a port here that bypasses the throttle plate. So when this valve here, called the idle air control valve, opens up, it allows air to go through this hole, bypassing the throttle plate, controlling the idle speed. Like carburetor had wet intake. This TBI has a wet intake manifold. So that means the air fuel mixture, the fuel mixes here with the air in the intake. And that means air and fuel go through the intake manifold. 
While this port injected engine, air goes in through the throttle body. So when the throttle is open, air goes in and the air goes in and then the fuel injectors spray the fuel into the intake ports right there. So inside the intake manifold is only air. While on this TBI, when the throttle opens, fuel is also being sucked in by the injectors. So this intake manifold has air and fuel going through it, and this one only has air going through it. A port injection system uses a fuel rail with individual fuel injectors. So port injection has one injector per cylinder. So pretty much everything after 1996 was required to have port fuel injection because part of the OBD2 standards requires them to shut off the fuel if, if an ignition coil or a spark plug or wires or mechanical problem to protect the catalytic converter.